praise the Lord. We want to consider something very important from the Word of God. But before we look into it, can we just have a brief moment of prayer? Our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We worship you for your mercy and your love over our lives. We thank you for your great grace over us. We thank you because you do not give us over to the will of the enemies. Lord, we pray even as we look at your word this day, you teach us your word and give us understanding of your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This day we'll be looking at the topic, Red Notice of God's Divine Invincible Surveillance. Red Notice of God's Divine Invincible Surveillance. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, a character here who was discovered by God's Divine Invincible Surveillance. He did that which was evil in flagrant disobedience against the word of God. And as a result of that, he faced destruction. He faced judgment, swift judgment was unleashed upon him. Let's look at Joshua. Our text will be taken from Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7 from verse 1 to 26 and chapter 8 from verse 1 to 30. We will be reading as we progress in the, we will be reading these verses as we progress uh, in the study. Let's look at Joshua chapter 7 in verse 1 or through to 26. It says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the, in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accosting, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. You can see that somebody took, somebody disobeyed, he went to take of something that was forbidden, some, something that was accursed, and that made the children of Israel to uh, be defeated in the battle the fort. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither for they are but few so they so there went up thither of the people about three thousand men and they fled before the men of Ai and the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men for they chased them before the gate even unto Shebarim and smote them in the going down wherefore the hearts the hearts of the people melted and became as water and Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even time he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their head. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall environ us round, and cut off our name from the earth, and what we thou do unto thy great name. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken, they have even taken of their custom, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. So you can see the discovery of the trespass. The, the, the trespass was that somebody had stolen something. Somebody had disobeyed the law of God, the commandment of God, and had stolen, had taken something that was a cost, and even put it among their own stuff. And so that's why we're looking at three points. We're looking at three points in this uh, message. The first point is 
the other man's to partake in in villainy. The other man's to partake in villainy. In uh, Joshua chapter seven, in verse one, he said, "But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the in their accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of their accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. That is the other man's there." The other man to partake in villainy. He knew that it was wrong, he knew that it was bad to take of that accursed thing, but he still went ahead to take it. That is an act of uh, that is an act of uh, pilfering, and he it was a kleptomaniac in that he took what was accursed, what is not supposed to be taken. He took it and he put it among the their own stuff. And that made the anger of the Lord to be kindled against the children of Israel. As a result of one man's sin, the whole of Israel faced defeat. The whole of Israel faced van uh, vanquishment. But when they made things right and they put out the the they put out the the, uh, the the commandment was given for them to destroy and and to bring to ruin the offender, the culprit, and what happened. God promised them victory. So we'll be looking at three things in this point. The first thing is the determination to a flagrant insubordination. The determination to a flagrant insubordination. This man, he was determined to, you know, take what wasn't his. Look at it in verse 12. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy their cause from among you. Let's look at in verse um in verse in verse 20. Uh, Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver on died. You can see that this man he had the spirit of covetousness. The spirit of covetousness was in him. That was why he he went and you know took a fee. He was not satisfied with what he had. He was not satisfied, and his uh, insatiation made him to you know go after something that was a cause, something that was forbidden, and made the anger of the Lord to. And he hid it among the stuff, and that made the anger of the Lord to be kindled against the children of Israel. The second thing here is the domination of a fortieth in the nation. The domination. Of a furtive inordination, he trespassed. He exceeded his present. He exceeded his present. He went outside of the circumference. What the the circumference is supposed to have tread in upon that circumference. He went outside of that circumference. That is a trespass. The domination of a furtive inordination. He did not allow anybody to know. He went like a sly. It was slyly, and it was he. He deceived the people around him. He deceived the people around him, and you know he brought it, hid it among his own stuff, not allowing anybody to know. He did not even allow anybody to know. When the children of Israel, when they were defeated, he did not still talk. That oh, uh, he didn't. He did not open himself up until Joshua himself, the one who was you know leading the children of Israel, until Joshua himself you know came out and undertook the the practice that God told him to undertake uh, to fetch him out to fetch out the culprit until Joshua undertook that uh, practice he was still you know hiding he was still in hiding instead of him to come out and say I'm the one that caused this I'm the one that I'm the cause of your problem and the cause of your trouble he was still hiding he thought he could still cover up and then when he was eventually fetched out that was when he started confessing the domination of a 40 being ordination it can make the anger of the Lord to be kindled and they can even lead to one's uh, destruction. I pray that the Lord will help us so as to do away with that act of covetousness so that we will not uh, uh, go to commit a sin that will make the anger of the Lord to be kindled against us in Jesus' name. Let's look at um, the book of Colossians. Colossians. You will always be thinking about that thing, that spirit of covetousness. When it's in any life, that person will always be thinking, how can I, how can I do this? How can you always, you will try all means 
I will try all means to ensure that that thing gets it. Even if it's to kill, he will try. Even if it's to steal, even if it's to destroy, like the devil who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, you want to do it so as to make sure he gets what he want. That's that spirit when that spirit of insatiation is upon one's life of covetousness. Look at it in Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter five, three verse five. It's a mortified there for your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness. You can see the uncleanness, the inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, the domination of a faulty inordination. Inordinate affection, he had affection for something inordinate, something that was excessive, something that was too, you know, something that was uh, caused. Inordinate, a cause, forbidden. He's not supposed to, you know, take that particular thing to put it among his own stuff. That would make the hand of the Lord to be kindled against the children of Israel to make all of them defeated. Just one man sin, make all the whole of the children of Israel. To be defeated, that's it. You see, mortified, therefore. What is he telling us by extension? He's telling us, he told the children of Israel at that time, and by extension to us, that we should mortify, therefore, our members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, covetousness, which is idolatry, as a result of the uh, spirit of covetousness upon Achan that made him to steal, that made him to carry out the act of a kleptomaniac, a, the act of a kleptomaniac, and that made him to be destroyed eventually. The domination of a faulty inordination. And that's why we're looking at the third thing here. The third thing is the detonation of a fear indignation. Look at verse 6 of, uh, of, of Colossians 3, in verse 6, they say, For which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience? Hmm. The wrath of God come on the children of disobedience. The wrath was eventually unleashed upon Achan. He was destroyed. Look at it in the book of uh, uh, Joshua chapter 7, in verse, I read from verse uh, 23. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and settled and, and unto the, all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all the Israel and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, the silver and the garment and the wealth of gold, and his sons and his daughters, and his oxen and his asses, and his sheep and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones, and burned them with fire, and burned them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the valley of Accor unto this day. You can see that that was when until they stoned him to death, the anger of the Lord was still upon the children of Israel. So it was after this that he had stoned him to death and raised a heap of stones on him, that was when the anger of the Lord was removed from them. I pray that the anger of the Lord will not be unleashed upon us as a result of our, our, our Adamans, our disobedience to partake in unrighteousness and villainy in Jesus' name. The second point we'll be looking at here is the attention to Paul's divineness, the attention to Paul divineness, the detonation of the fear and indignation, the anger of the Lord was kindled. He said, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. There's no how somebody is dis who, who is disobedient will not uh, receive the judgment of God, except that person repents, except the person repents in those ashes. He should not wait until he's fetched out. He should go plainly. He should go openly and submit unto the Lord. Say, submit unto the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He should resist all the devil's, uh, uh, you know, uh, whispering and, you know, all the devil's uh, advice or counsel to not open up. He should resist all those uh, uh, counsel of the devil to, to still remain in hiding. He should resist all that and submit wholeheartedly unto God, and God will receive that person unto himself. The attention to Paul Vinus. God gave Joshua the procedure, the procedure to, you know, the procedure to fetch out the culprit, to to fetch out the, the, the offender, the one who has committed an offense, and that need to be immediately expelled, not only expelled, expunged, not only expunged, demilitarized. Let's look at uh, the attention now to Paul's violence in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. I read from verse 12. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy their cause from among you, except you do something, except you fulfill the condition, uh, you will continue to be defeated. 
they will continue to be defeated. The Israelites will continue to turn their back on their enemies, and their enemies will continue to uh, destroy them. They will continue to turn their back before their enemies, and they, the enemies will continue to destroy them. But when you do something now, the procedure, the, the practice that I want to give unto you, the prescription that I want to give unto you, if you can fulfill that, then your enemies will no longer be able to, to defeat you anymore. Look at it in verse 13. Oh, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, There is an accosting in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou canst not stand before thy enemies until you take away the accosting from among you. That is the attention there, the alertness, the alertness and the, 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 you know, the consciousness there, the attention to purge vileness. To remove corruption, to remove their costing in the morning, verse 14. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by the by households, and the household which the Lord shall shall take shall come man by man, and it shall be that he that is taken with their costing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he had, because he had transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he had wrought fully in Israel. So Joshua arose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. You can see that the Lord to uh, Joshua uh, was given the commandment, the procedure, and the prescription, and the practice on how to fetch out the culprit. And he used that method, he used that technique, and he was able to, to you know, to get Achan, he get he got Achan and he told him to confess. He he followed the procedure. The procedure was for him to uh, fetch them out tribes. He should bring out the tribes first, and then from the tribes, from the tribes to the families, and then from the families to the household, and then from the household. He shall take them out man by man from the from each household. So from each tribe, he brought them out, then to the families, then to the household, then individually, individually, man by man. And through that procedure, he was able to fetch out uh, Achan. As he fetched out Achan, that was the we are looking at three things here. Number one is the exposition. Of the perpetrator, the exposition of the perpetrator. It was able to fetch out the culprit, was able to expose the evildoer and the offender. Look at it in verse uh, 19. My and Joshua said unto Hican, My son, give I pray the glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. That's the exposition. The, the second year is the extradition of the Polonia. The extradition of the Polonia. That means they delivered him to be stoned. They delivered him to judgment. To judgment. The judgment at that time. Immediate judgment. The immediate judgment. Uh, you know, at this time, when the time of grace has come, the time of grace and mercy has come, and the immediate judgment is no longer, you know, given. Uh, in the time of the children of Israel, immediate judgment was met out to those offenders, to those who were uh, deemed corporates. And so, now that the grace of God is available, we should not take the grace of God for granted. We should not take the grace of God for granted. He says that the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. His long suffering to us should not take his grace for granted. Neither should we use his mercy as a license to continue more in iniquity, but rather we should uh, surrender unto the Lord. We should turn away from our vileness and surrender totally unto the Lord. The extradition of the Polina. He was a thief, he was a uh, pilfer. And he was extradited, he was delivered 
to judgment. Look at it in verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the servant died. That is what he has told him, what he has uh, hid in there. The exposition of the perpetrator there that has been exposed and so the extradition of the Paulina. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the weight of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that they had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. They brought them unto the valley of Echo, and Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. The third, the third year is the extermination of the Pilfra. The extermination, you see, they brought him the extradition of the Poroina, the, the thief. And so the, the extermination of the Pilfra now is that he will be destroyed. They are going to stone him to death. They are going to burn all that he has stolen. They are going to burn it with fire. Look at it in verse 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day, and all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned him, them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of, the, of that place was named, was called the Valley of Accor unto this day. What will happen to those people who remain in sin? Revelation chapter 20. Who, those people remain in sin and they refuse to repent and turn away from the Lord. They continue hiding their sins. They continue hiding their sins and they don't know that they will be they will they will they will give account of what that they have done. Let's look at let's look at Revelation 21 verse 8 first. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. You see, those people are covetous, they're idolaters. The soul they do they serve that particular thing. They do all they can in order to get that thing. That means that thing has become an idol to them. They say, and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then in chapter 20 of Revelation, verse 11 to 15, And I saw a great white throat and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Those who their names are not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Those who continue in their wicked lifestyle, in their evil, evil in their nefariousness, in their vileness, in their villainy, those people, their names will not be written in the book of life. And they will be cast into the lake of fire, except they turn away from their sins now. That is why the message comes to them. Let them repent of their of their of their villainy. Let them repent of their abominable works, of their murder, of their home of their of their sorcery, of their idolatry, and of, of their lying, of their lying. Let them repent of all their abominable works so that they will escape this judgment. The third point here, after they have exterminated the Pephra. The Lord assured Joshua, the leader of Israel, the children of Israel, after Moses had gone, the leader of the children of Israel, the Lord assured Joshua of a promised victory. And by extension, he assured Joshua, by extension to the children of Israel, by extension to us now, that when we have taken away that which is evil from our lives, then the Lord will grant us the victory that we have been asking the, the, the victory that we desire to save my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways yes he wants us to turn from our wicked ways from our abominable works from our abominations and turn from their wicked ways then we lie here from heaven and we forgive their sins and we heal their land so that is when the lord will grant us victory it will heal our land there will no more be pestilence there will no more be uh earthquake there will no more be pandemics in our land, in our world. There will no more be, you know, there will no more be droughts, lack. There will no longer be penury 
and there will no longer be poverty. He said, The floods shall be full of wheat, the floods shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And now we restore to you the years that the locusts are eating, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the farmer worm, the great army which I sent among you. And he said, Ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord thy God, which I dealt wondrously with you, and you shall never be ashamed. So the Lord is he wants to pour out his abundance, his plentifulness upon us, but he wants us to purge vileness. He wants us to do away with villainy. He wants us to take out corruption. The assurance of a promised victory. The assurance of a promised victory in chapter 8 of of Joshua now we come to chapter 8 from verse 1 to 30 uh, we will read maybe we will read selected verses here in chapter 8 from verse 1 to 30 and the Lord said unto Joshua fear not neither be thou dismayed take all the people of war with thee and arise go up to I see I have given on, into thy hand the king of I and his people and his city and his land that's an assurance there even a reassurance a great uh, you know expectation to the children of Israel to Joshua and by extension the children of Israel that now after they have taken out the vileness they have purged vileness and they have taken out the corruption now they are going to have the victory that they did not have before they went against I the people of I defeated them now after taking the vileness they are going to defeat the children of I the people of I they are going to defeat them and great will be the defeat of I, even the king of I. Let's look at uh, a three things here. We'll be looking at three things here. The first thing is the fearlessness and forthrightness of the men of valor. The fearlessness and forthrightness of the men of valor. Now they have been, they have taken out villainy, and now they now have a forthrightness in them and forthrightness to now go against the men of I, the men of valor. Now the children of Israel are the men of valor, and so they are going to go against the men of I in verse 2. And thou shalt do to I and a king as thou didst unto Jericho and a king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves, Lay thee an ambush for the city behind thee. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against I. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. 30,000 men of valor. 30,000 men of valor. 30,000 valiant men. He took them to war against the men of I. And those men of valor did greatly as a result of God's backing upon them. Yes, when God backs up a man, that man will do valiantly, that man will do greatly. He, he will defeat all his enemies. And he commanded them, saying, in verse 4, Behold, you shall be lying with against this city, against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. And I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us, as at the first that we will flee before them. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city. For they will say they flee before us as at the first, therefore we will flee before them. Then you shall arise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when ye have taken the city that ye shall set the city on fire according to the command of the Lord. Shall ye do? See, I have commanded you. you can see this was a command, the fearlessness. As this was being commanded, then they were fearless. And they had the fortrightness to go against the men of I. In verse, in verse 9, Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush and abode between Bethel and I on the west side of I. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. And Joshua rose up early in the morning. They have given a command now. They want to now undertake what they have commanded. What Joshua had commanded them, they wanted to undertake that. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people of before the people to I. And all the people, even the people of God that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city and pitched on the north side of I. Now there was a valley between them and I. The second thing here is the fortitude to fight with vigor. The fortitude to fight with vigor. Now they were defeated before the children of Israel as a result of violence. Now they have taken out the violence, they were now going to defeat the men of I. 
they are going to fight with vigor, with the strength of God upon them. Look at it in verse 12 now. And he took about 5,000 men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and I on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, even all the host that was on the north of the city, and their liars in wait on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it, that they hasted and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people at the time appointed before the plain, but he wished not that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all the and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. And all the people that were in eye were called together to pursue after them, and they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward I, for I will give it into thy hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city. You can see there. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered into the city, and took it, and hasted and set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw and behold the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this world that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back onto their under the pursuers. Then look at the third point, the third thing here under this point, the assurance of a promised victory is the formula to fame vanquishment. The formula to fame vanquishment. The Lord God was an instruction given by God unto Joshua. To command the children of Israel to do that, to fame vanquishment as if they were already defeated, but they were in they were they, they were liars, those who were in uh, the ambuscade, it was an ambuscade, an ambushment against uh, the men of I, so that as to defeat them and to destroy them, to defeat them, to destroy their city, and to you know the Lord had given already the city, the the Lord had given I unto the Children of Israel already are given the city of Ai, given the men of Ai, everything they are giving it unto the children of Israel, and they were going to be conquerors, more than conquerors. Look at verse 20, 21. And when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, and they turned again the and slew the men of Ai, and the other issued out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And they smote them, and so that they let none of them remain or escape. And the king of Ai, they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass, when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness wherein they chased them, and when they were all falling on the head of the sword, until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned unto Ai, as smote with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all the, that fell that the boat of men and women were 12,000, even all the men of I. You can see that 12,000, and they took the spoil. Only the cattle, look at it in verse 20. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of I. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves, according unto the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. Look at verse 29. And the king of Ai he hanged on a tree until even time. You can see then the Lord that the Lord promised uh, the the Lord promised Joshua and the children of Israel that he was going to give Ai unto them. He was even going to give the king of Ai unto them, and now it was fulfilled in verse 29. And the king of Ai he hanged on a tree. Joshua hanged on a tree until even died. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entry of the gate of the city and raised there on a great, great heap of stones that remained unto this day. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Eber. You can see this teaching, Red Notice of God's Divine Invisible Surveillance, is teaching us that no matter what any man does, it will be exposed. No matter how long he thinks he can hide, that man will surely be exposed. And so he's telling us that we should come out of if we should come out of any form of hiding so that we will not eventually uh, receive judgment, divine judgment from God. Red notice of God's invisible of God's divine invisible surveillance. God will surely know, he will surely notice. 
what we have done. So let us come out so that we will not perish, but we will let us repent wholeheartedly so that we will not perish, but we will have everlasting life at the end of time. Go to the Lord in prayer now and talk to him to help you that every spirit of covetousness, every spirit of corruption, he will take it away from your life so that you will not be a victim. You will not be vanquished eventually, but you will be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen.